Hey everyone, sorry it's been a while since I've made a video. Um, I've been hard at work still on Isaac and 3PO, just really busy learning a bunch of new techniques. Actually, one of those I want to show you because I'm really proud of it. This is an Isaac hand. Well, it'll actually be an Isaac hand. It's um, Right now it's in resin. Um, but um, during all this time in between videos, I've been learning how to sculpt. So I actually sculpted this using monster clay and a good friend of mine, King Koi, was kind enough to mold and cast this. This is currently casted in resin. Um, we took one of these resin hands, cut off the fingers, and I used that to uh, sculpt the other hand. Um, and eventually these will become wearable gloves. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. Today we're going to talk about Blender. I know I promised you all a video, um, a video tutorial um, on Blender previously. So here we are. Um, first, I want to give a shout out to Jesse M. Um, he was kind enough to uh, jump on a few Zoom calls to uh, show me some tips and tricks in Blender to get done what I needed to get done. Um, and that was to modify the C3PO files so they fit me better. Because um, apparently, C3PO, that costume, was not designed for someone with an hourglass figure. Um, the shorts and the legs have been super fun trying to get those to fit it's been a bit of a journey uh but now i'm finding you know feeling pretty good about everything i actually have one of the parts printing right now um so hopefully i'll start getting to the point where i have a, a suit mostly together and i can start moving on to some other steps um by the way jesse uh name might sound familiar because jesse is the person that created the c3po files um, you can find a link to those files um, in the description of this video. So, first, before I go any farther, I want to preface that I am in by no way an expert on Blender. I learned enough Blender from, to get from point A to point B, which is modifying um, these files for C3PO to make them fit me and to print them and I'm not doing them probably in the most elegant way, but it's a way that works for me. Um, the goal of this video is to kind of show you how to get from point A to point B very quickly. I know that learning new software, specifically things like 3D modeling, um, can be extremely intimidating to a lot of people. I mean, I'm a, I'm a software architect by day. Um, I work with technology and the thought of learning a 3D program a little overwhelming for me um, as well and it's there's a lot of information to digest so hopefully I try to you know make this a little little easier for you um, and kind of showing the areas that you need to concentrate on so that you can also modify your files in the same way if, if you need to um, as well also I'm not going to start at the very basics basics of blender um, I highly recommend that you check out the 3D printing professor on YouTube. He has some amazing tutorials on how to use Blender for 3D printing. Super awesome. Um, Blender, you know, it can also be used for animation and the way that you set up Blender for animation versus 3D printing is a little bit different. He'll go into full detail on that. Um, you can find a link below in the description of this video. Highly recommend that you check it out. And with that, let's get going and moving over into Blender. So here we have Blender. Um, I've already have imported into this base file an avatar wearing a pair of 3PO shorts that I have already modified um, to fit me better. Um, we're going to use this as a base and what we're going to be modifying today um, are going to be is going to be one of the thighs. Um, I know a lot of people when you're working on the uh, 3PO stuff, have trouble with shorts and leg length, um, specifically because the legs, when a lot of us have to size them up, and then we size them up, they get even longer. Um, and I know for me, even the 100% sized um, legs were long on me, um, but to get them to fit, I had to scale them up to 108%, which made them even longer. So, that is what I'm going to show you today. Um, first, um, some of you might be wondering, where did I get this avatar? Um, so this avatar is roughly sized to myself, and I took it from a program called Armorsmith. Um, if you're online and you're talking about, hey, how can I better size 3D files to fit me better? Probably one of the answers that a lot of people are going to say, go check out Armorsmith. Armorsmith is a great 
program. It allows you to create an art, uh, this avatar that's you know, based on your measurements, and it's somewhat, it's pretty close. Um, say it's not necessarily exact, because we're all a little bit different. If you wanted precision, you probably need a 3D scan of your body, but you know what, it's good enough. Um, so you might be saying, well, Blair, why did you go check out Armorsmith and you're not using it and you're still using Blender? Armorsmith's a great program, but it doesn't have quite the level of control that Blender gives you, and Blender gives me a lot more flexibility um, for things that I want to manipulate um, to make the parts fit me better. Um, so, you know, what I ended up doing, I found the benefit of just that it did create this avatar was enough benefit for me. Other thing to note, Armorsmith is PC only. I'm on a Mac. Um, luckily, I'm a tech nerd and I had a Windows VM, so I loaded it on there and took the avatar and pulled it over on my Mac side of things, and uh, here we are. So with that, um, let's get started. So I'm gonna start, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna import in um, a thigh. So let me go and get that. And we're gonna work on a right thigh because there's some interesting details on there. Awesome, so we have we have a thigh, there it is. Um, when I'm working on things, I like to change the colors of them because it helps me see what I'm working on, specifically when I'm trying to get things to fit a little bit better. Um, and I'll show you some other views where that comes in handy. So right now, I'm gonna come over um, onto the right hand of the screen and I'm gonna click on Material properties. Um, after clicking on this, we can see it's highlighted. So I know I've selected. I'm gonna hit new. Um, I'm gonna give it a color. Let's make it pink. Sure, why not? So now we have a pink, more easily uh, viewable. So what's next? Next is we have this currently scaled at a hundred percent. And what I said is that in order to get this to fit my thigh and the shorts correctly, it needs to be scaled up to 108%. Thing to note is that um, a lot of people say that to um, get this um, print to screen accurate size, you're going to probably scale up anywhere from 106 to 108%. So, you know, if you're trying to size this and you think you're close to Anthony Daniels, anywhere between there might be a good place to start. So on the scale, I'm gonna come in here and it's at one, so I'm gonna go 1.08 on the X, Y, and Z. So we're gonna scale this up. Awesome, so now we are perfectly scaled. Next, I'm gonna actually hide the avatar and I'm gonna hide the shorts. And we're gonna talk about the process for actually manipulating um, this in, in Blender. So, when we actually come in and look at this object when we import it, I'm gonna go ahead and go into, I'm currently in object mode, I'm gonna tab into edit mode and we're gonna zoom in. And when I zoom in, and I'm gonna deselect all these, we can see all of the different triangles. This is made up of a bunch of different faces. And this makes up this entire mesh, it creates the shape. Um, if I wanted to manipulate this, I could attempt to manipulate each one of these little things. It's not ideal. It's not going to be a good way. You're going to probably end up with a not great result um, at the end of the day. So what we're going to end up doing is using a thing called a, um, it's a modifier. Um, and it's called, and you can go, I'm not going to go into detail on these terms um, exactly. You can go, go Google them, go look at other, t uh, other tutorials. But basically, we're going to use a modifier known as the mesh deform, um, and we're going to do that. And how the mesh deform works is we're going to create another object um, that encapsulates this thigh object, and it's going to be a very simple, with very few, like very simple object with very few faces. But it makes it easier to manipulate the part that we're working on and do so uniformly with more control. So I'm going to actually come out of here, and I'm going to. I'm going to exit and I'm going to go into out of object mode and I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a new mesh and I'm going to add a cylinder because the cylinder is most like what we're looking to add. And with that, um, I'm going to go and we can see my little cylinder is really tiny. It's over here. I'm going to scale it. Scale, 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 scale. S scale. There we go. And I'm going to click this little icon into the move tool. I could also do this with a uh, key cuts, but this is a little faster. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to work on encapsulating this guy. So 
I'm going to wrap this entire cylinder around the thigh. Um, one thing to note um, is that I can use my key cuts to first scale. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and move this in the middle. It's a little easier. Um, and I'm going to hit the S key. And you can see that I can, um, right now I just used it. Just the S key with nothing uniformly scales it. Now let's say I only want to scale in, some, in the, the Z axis. I hit S, Z, right? And so then we can scale in a specific direction. Another thing to note that I found really handy, and this was actually a tip from Jesse, um, is this little guy up at the top. Um, it's this uh, transform point. It's currently selected at the bounding box center. I'm going to select the 3D cursor. The 3D cursor is pretty cool. It's this little cursor that I can put in different places and things will scale from there. So as we saw before, when I was using the bounding box, it was scaling from the center. So it was uniformly scaling on both sides. Now let's just say I want to scale from uh, only the top. So I'm gonna place the cursor here. I'm gonna hit S and Z and notice how then I'm just scaling at the top, which is really cool. I'm gonna kind of use that same thing to make this fit. So I'm gonna do the same for on the X side. That looks kind of good. Um, I'm actually going to pull this up a little bit. You'll see why I'm not covering the inf I'm going to go into that in a second, why I'm not covering the entire thing. So, um, and also while I'm talking about it, you can kind of see me flipping around on these different views. Um, there's different views. We can, if I just randomly scroll, you can kind of see this is the user perspective. It kind of brings in like lighting and camera. I just really want to mostly focus on um, the objects. So I use this thing called orthographic mode that just really lets me see the objects themselves um, without camera and all, all that fun stuff. Go Google the difference between like the user perspective and orthographic perspective. Um, the way one thing is learn your key cuts for that are on the numeric pad. So if I hit one, I see the front. If I hit control one, um, I see the back. Um, and then I can do three for the right, control three for left and right. This is can be different on different platforms. I'm on a Mac using mostly my uh, my scroll pad and my uh, my touch pad and my uh, key keyboard on my laptop. Um, there's the top or the top bottom views. Great. So um, we're gonna start here. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and go to this view to the top view so I can work on getting this a little better contained. You see, I'm, I keep moving the position of the cursor based on where I want to scale, and I also then keep changing my views so I know how much more I need to, you know, scale in a certain direction. Um, I find it's easier. I could turn this into a wireframe, but I find it easier to see that I have this completely enclosed in the cylinder by having the actual textures on right now. But we're, we're going to turn those off in a second. All right, looks like we got a little guy in the back is peeking out. So I'm going to side view. I'm going to pull this back a little bit more. And we're going to actually gonna go ahead and pull it out just a little bit more. There we go. I think we might have gotten it all down. Check the top. Perfect. Great. Okay, so now that I think it's mostly enclosed, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this view. So instead of it being this cylinder being textured so I can see what's below, I'm going to go and I'm going to click on this box here. It's object property properties, and I'm going to click on wire. Perfect. Now I can see what we have, and everything's nicely wrapped. Um, one thing I am going to do. I'm going to pull this up just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so why am I doing it? Why I'm not enclosing the entire thing in this and manipulating the entire thigh? Why am I just not shrink? Like, I'm, so the goal is to shorten this, this thigh. Why wouldn't I want to shrink the entire thing? Some of you might be asking to yourselves. Um, so if we look, and actually I've printed here. So actually I'm going to switch over the camera. Okay, so why am I not 
encasing that entire thing to manipulate it. The thing is, is the knee joint. And this needs to be a circle. If I were to squish this, this becomes an oval. And you can kind of see the problem with that when this becomes an oval. If you also squish the, uh, the shin, that'll be an oval, or it might not be the same oval because you might need to squish it less if you don't uniformly do and reduce the height overall. But anytime you just squish on the Z, you're going to affect this joint. This needs to stay a circle. Um, so I'm only doing the transform on the above. Um, there are ways that you can potentially encase the entire thing. However, I always found that it still slightly affected this. Now, the issue with doing it the way that I am is that you can end up with artifacts where the edge of the containing object for the mesh to form hits the object. Remember, you kind of saw where I had the cylinder was coming down and like stopped here, and then we're not changing anything. You can you end up sometimes with little artifacts, and this is a perfect example. This was a mistake on my part because I fixed it and then exported a version of this where I hadn't fixed it. So I ended up with a little, I don't know if you can see if I can, there they are right here in the reflection. You can see the little artifacts there where it's not necessarily smooth. Not terrible, it's one more thing I have to clean up and sand and all that good stuff. I gotta do enough sanding as it is, so it's no big deal. Um, but I'll talk about how to clean that. But again, you could try encapsulating it um, because when you encapsulate the whole object, if you make a if you move something, it, it kind of nicely smooths everything else out um, in the mesh of that object. But I found better results this way, and if you end up with a few artifacts, you still you're still gonna sand if you're gonna um, if you're gonna chrome this at the end of the day. So no big deal. So let's go back to Blender. Great. So here we are, and we have this. So what we're gonna do? I'm gonna turn this avatar back on because what we're going to do is we're going to go and position this on the avatar. We're going to turn our shorts on as well um, so we can get to resizing. So let's go ahead and move this. Oops, I'm actually going to put this back on bounding box. I don't need the, to be on the uh, cursor anymore. And you'll see me flipping the different views until I get this in a place that I am happy with. Alright, now at this point we're going to go in and we're going to rotate this on the X. And I'm using all my fancy key cuts if you guys are running. Again, watch those videos from the 3D printing professor. That's where I learned all of them. <laughs> um, oops, as I get a little chaotic and not paying attention to what I'm mousing on. All right. That might be a little extreme of a uh, rotation, but that's fine. We'll, we'll clean this up as soon as we get this in the position we're happy with. And actually this needs to come down. That's probably my problem. This is not an exact science of where this is going to fit. Um, we'll do our best as we can. A little bit of guessing. All right. Yeah, let's, uh, the rotation is a little extreme. We're going to rotate on the X and pull it back just a little bit. And I'm not going to do this too precise because I could sit here all day um, and make these modifications. Um, but we'll get it up in a decent place. Enough to show what needs to be done. Alright, just a few more little tweaks here. Drop the just a little bit more. And do a few little tweaks. I'll keep that there actually, that'll be fine to show some things. Alright, so 
There we go. We have this in a good enough of a place that um, positioned enough that we can now figure out what we need to manipulate to make it fit this better. So the first thing that we can really see here is that this is we kind of want the middle of this knee should here should be at the middle of the knee on the avatar and we can see it's definitely too low. Um, one thing that you can also do is if you know how much you need to shorten it um, you can uh, you can start measuring things as well. And when I say measure there is a measure tool um, that you can come in you can reduce heights and um, over here I can click the measure and I can draw um, it will measure in millimeters um, so I can kind of gut check some some dimensions. I'm just gonna I'm not gonna really do any precision uh, measuring though um, as we go through this. I just want to show you how we're, we're gonna do these things. So first now what we want to do is we are now ready that we have this cylinder to start moving and binding it. We have to bind this cylinder to the thigh object in order for us to manipulate it. We need to do a few other things to it. So I'm gonna go into edit mode on the cylinder. Um, come on. We did not do that on the cylinder. I need to deselect. I just want the cylinder. There we go. Now we are in edit mode and just in the cylinder. So we need to make a few things. I could I could modify this just like this, but I don't have a lot of points of modification. And what I mean by that is I only have so many few planes and, and vertices, and I'm, there's some things that I'm going to want to modify specifically as we move forward. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually hide the avatar right now. Is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add some, some loops. And what I mean by that, you'll see here in a second. I'm going to hit um, Control R, and what we see is we get these lines. So I can come in here, depending on where I want to modify things, and then I can click. So I'm hitting Control R, um, and then I see the line. When I see the line going, whether it's in the, the X or Y, I click, and then I can move it. The other thing that I can do is I can hit Control R. And I can hit, once I get it in the direction I'm going to go, I can hit a number, let's say three. And it will give me three. And the interesting thing with that is it will give you as many um, as you want. And then you can move them around, but they'll fill the space equally. I don't want that to so hit escape. I'm in a little bit more control. Um, I'm okay if they're not distanced the same. Um, but you'll see here in a second. there's going to be a few places in here where I might want a few more. And it'll give me more level control. The more of these you add, though, um, it does can make it a little bit more challenging um, to handle your um, transformations. Now you're seeing right here over this circle, I am getting a little bit, putting them a little closer. I have reasons for that. Over at the bottom, I don't really need that. Let's go to the front, and I'm actually going to add a few more right in here. And I have reasons, because as I transform this, these details um, will actually be a little deformed, and we're going to have to kind of fix them. No show you that what, what, what will happen as we start moving into this. Right. That should be good. Okay, now that we have that, and we have all those things to find, I'm going to go in and I am going to come out of object mode here on this. And I'm going to click on the thigh. And what I'm going to do on, so now the thigh is selected. And I'm going to come in here and hit the wrench tool, which is adding a modifier. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to come and find the mesh deform. There it is. Great. So the mesh deform. And then I'm going to find my a cylinder. There it is. So what I've done is I'm saying I want to use the cylinder that we created to deform my thigh. Um, also here um, we can see these little boxes here will let us know like the deform what's interesting what's good, cool about the deforms is it technically doesn't affect the under underlying object until we apply it but it affects how we view it so I'm gonna go ahead and click these boxes so when I switch in and out of different views um, I can still see that I can see the, the deform that it's actually taking place and with that you can increase the precision however beware you can kill your computer 
five tends to be good, but the higher the level of the pre precision, the more your computer will chug and chug and try to think and it might hate you and just die. So five tends to be good and I'm gonna hit bind. So it's gonna think here for a second. It's thinking, it's thinking. Hopefully with all my stuff running, it doesn't take too long. Thinking, oh, it's still thinking. There it goes, not too bad. So we are now, we now have that bound for deform. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click off of the thigh and we're going to click on the cylinder because what we're going to manipulate in Blender is the cylinder, not the thigh, but you'll see what happens here in a second. So we're gonna go into edit mode. I'm gonna hit A and what I'm going to do, actually I'm gonna put the avatar back on. What I wanna do, and I can see that I know that this is too long, I'm gonna actually put the cursor and I'm gonna make sure that my, uh, I'm gonna select it to use the 3D cursor. I'm gonna put it at the bottom of the cylinder. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit S and Z. And we are gonna look at it is shrinking our thigh. Pretty cool, right? So I'm going to, now let's take a look at what we just did. So we shrunk it, cool. So let's go ahead and we're gonna reposition both of these. So I'm actually gonna tab out of that. I'm gonna select both the cylinder and the thigh, and I'm gonna go ahead and move those up. Just a bit, great, okay. So let's take a look. Uh, that's closer, I mean, that looks pretty, much better and actually while we're at it I'm going to do that and I'm gonna oops, select yeah, oh, I'm gonna go to my cursor again so I want to move these over okay, and then select and select both of those guys I'm gonna make another quick manipulation here just a little bit actually so, you know what, we can go a little bit more. So I'm gonna go again, I'm gonna click on the cylinder, I'm gonna tab into there, I'm gonna place my cursor, and then I'm gonna scale it. Let's go a little bit more, squishing it just a bit. Great, so we're gonna come out, we're gonna go back into object mode. Um, cursor's fine, we're gonna do that, and we're gonna go and move this up. take a look. That looks pretty good. We're going to call that good enough. So now we have shortened the thigh. That's pretty cool, right? All right, so now the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to actually come in here and I'm going to reposition this a little bit more again. So I'm going to do that. Turn object mode. I always double check. I got both my things selected. Let's make this just a little bit more. That's fine. Okay. So, oh, and actually, I'm going to push this back. It looks like a little bit more interesting. Which means. So, I, again, I'm not going to try. I had to fiddle with this a while to get it to fit on the hair, but good enough. All right, let's just call this good enough right now. Um, so, that's cool. Now, one of the other things that I ended up doing on, uh, on my version was. Um, I needed to flare. This needed to flare a little bit more. Um, it'll help give the leg a little bit movement. But we can we can actually come in here and flare this, but flare this out on the side of the hip a little bit more um, by uh, deforming this mesh. So I'm gonna click out, and we're gonna just click on the cylinder again. We're gonna tab into object mode. So how are we gonna do that? I'm actually gonna hide the avatar. It's a little bit in my way. And I'm gonna come in here on this mode, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna deselect right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna change it to where I can select faces, 
and I'm just going to kind of come in around wherever these faces that I kind of want to manipulate are. You have to play around with this. You can do other multi-select. I just, I like this. It gives me control as I decide what faces I want to manipulate. Yeah, when I first was trying to figure out how to make this work, I was actually making the cylinders tight, really tightly fitted um, to the object I was working on, and it was taking forever. Sure, you do get more control, but the more faces that you add as you start moving one or a point or whatever, it, it actually can make it more complex, so the more simple your objects as we move into these manipulations, the better. Okay, cool. So we have these guys um, are selected. I'm gonna go and make sure that I'm using a bounding box here. And these are selected. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit S and I'm gonna hit X. And what I can do is I can kind of pull this. If I really wanted to, I can pull that out. And you can see how it's kind of starting to to flare that out a bit if I wanted to, right? And I could even come and be more specific. So this is just generalized showing you how to do this. Um, then like, let's say, you know, I want this part a little bit more. I already just kind of, you know, come in here. And I'm gonna also just, uh, actually, you know what I did wrong there? I want to hit S, I actually was scaling it, so let's do this again. Um, I want to hit G and X. That's what I wanted. There we go. That's better. Don't get your things. So when we're flaring, I want to do move. I want to move the vertices and the planes versus I versus uh, scaling them. Don't make that mistake. So we see how that whole thing kind of if I undo it, how it shifted out, right? So we can go back and redo it. There we go. Shift out. So that's how we can kind of flare it. You can you can have fun with that. Other things that I did was I ended up manipulating, um, you know, here. So let's say, let's say, oh, I want to pull this out a little bit more first. So we're going to come in here. We're going to grab a few of these. And you have to be careful, and you'll have to look at, like, along each way what you're doing. You have to experiment a little bit. So I'm going to here, the next, I'm going to pull this out just a bit. Now, as you do this stuff, you want to make your moves small because they will start to affect the detailing on here and what I mean by that that you might have to correct I finally just decided I'm just going to correct it but I did some um, let me show you on this piece I needed to flare the back when we start getting some warping here I could have spent the time in blender to fix it but actually I'm, I'm going to end up using these uh, to uh, create a mold for fiberglassing so I'm I'm actually just going to correct this detailing or a lot of people aren't going to really notice it, so it depends on how accurate you want it to be, but sometimes I like the little the little unevenness, makes it kind of a little special as long as it's not, you know, too obvious, but you know what's yours? That's kind of cool, the little tells, the tells of a maker, right? That's, that's fun. So, okay, so, so we can see that. Another thing that you can do, let's say I, I, uh, I wanted to manipulate on mine, um, this level so I can come in here. Um, I've been using planes, but we can also come in and manipulate vertices or, or kind of fun depending on how you want to, but I'm going to come in here with a few of these guys here and I'm going to now uh, pull them down. So we can see how that starts to affect that top shape. Again, you can see how we start having a little, it does start to warp, so you know, you just kind of work in increments getting it in places so here I'm like oh that, that warped it a little too much so I can come in here and I can pull this some of them won't always you kind of have to grab a few more you can kind of you know play around with it a bit there we go and there we go you start to pull it again you just kind of kind of play with it a little bit now other things that are, are kind of interesting is these details uh, for the piping do tend to get squashed a bit. Um, also, when we 
shrunk it again we talked about circles becoming ovals we do have a little bit of that here as well I mean it doesn't look horrible most people probably wouldn't notice but I did add some more points in here because if we wanted to fix this we, we can't we can kind of correct it a bit all right let me get in the right view here here we go and scroll this guy up cool so I'm gonna go ahead and switch over and I'm gonna select these faces in through here um and, and then what you can, well, can do here, do, 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 there we go, if I can click, I'm going to go back to my little uh, 3D cursor, and I'm going to pick it, I'm going to select it here, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, move some of the stuff, and actually I lied, I'm going to click here, and I want to only manipulate here for right now. Let's see what this does. So I'm kind of lifting. As you see, I'm kind of lifting here. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to, I'm hitting G and Z to pull this down. So I'm kind of trying to bring that circle look back, right? So I kind of corrected that shrinkage right there. Um, so we have a little bit, bit better of that. So that's really it. I mean, that is about all that you really need to do with this. So let's actually go and look and see if we have um, any of those artifacts I talked about. So really it's create your object, make it simple. And uh, as long as you know like your scale tools and knowing how to move your vertices and face selection um, and the mesh to form, it's really all you need to know to manipulate these pieces. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm going to go and take a look to see if we have any of those. Yeah, we do. Okay, here we go. This is, this is a good thing to talk about. All right, so here, we don't see this anywhere else, but we see it right here all the way around. So there is a way we can kind of clean this up. Um, again, it will kind of show and distort on your print. Um, so we are currently in edit mode, but we want to get out of that. And what we're going to do is we want to go and select, actually in this case, the actual thigh and we're going to go into edit mode. Great. So now what we're going to do, we're going to hit a tool. We're going to hit um, C and C gives us a, a tool that goes in and it selects, help, lets us select, select faces. So I'm going to hit C. Anyway, tool. There it goes. It's letting me select my faces. So I'm basically just kind of selecting the faces. Now it won't let you rotate with that tool engaged. Um, so you're going to have to hit escape to get out of it. Come to another view and hit C again. And I'm just going to kind of go and just grab all this stuff where I kind of see it. Um, and then escape. Also thing to note is sometimes you, it won't necessarily, depending on the view, you won't get into where all the piping deal, details are. So you might need to like kind of rotate around and from different views to make sure you've got all those over here. But the edges weren't covered into that piping detail. Just want to make sure. All right. So I keep coming around the C tool again as I rotate around. Choo -choo -choo. Grabbing. There we go. Okay, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but all right, we got enough. We saw that it was pretty bad on the front here, too. Right, okay. Good enough. Do you want to grab these edges? highlighted. Cool, that should be good enough. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a thing called a vertex group. So I come down here, it's the little green triangle, vertex group, and I'm going to hit create a little plus sign. I'm going to rename this like, it'll let me I'll call this like a thigh correction. Great, and then I'm going to hit assign. So what it's done is just assigned 
all these guys to this vertex group. So if I click off of them, um, I can now then come back and hit select and all those, those things pop up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, I'm going to go and pop back out of, um, the, out of edit mode, back into object mode. So we can see all of this that's, that's happening. I'm going to actually come in and add another modifier, um, to this. And we're going to just go, eh, I always go back and forth between smooth, smooth, corrective, whatever. Um, let's see how smooth it does. They each kind of do a little different thing. But what's cool is I can go and I can select a vertex group. And that's the thigh correction. Great. Oh, and then remember I'm going to hit these other two buttons here so it's visible. And then I'm going to play around with this, this factor number here. Let's see if we can... There it is. Let's see if we go a little bit. There we go. So what you're seeing is I'm kind of just playing with these numbers a bit. It won't be perfect, um, but I can use that to kind of smooth up where this deform. I might have not selected everything perfect, but the smooth can um, can do that. Let's go ahead and pull this off. And we can go ahead and let me add another one. Let's see if sometimes we do the smooth corrective. It does a little bit of a better, a better job. Okay. Yeah, let's go here. Yeah, let's add a vertex group. And in this case, it's not really doing us much better. But you can play around with these different um, correctors um, and the smooth modifiers to get that work. So I think the first one, the smooth one, seemed to work better. And just play around the numbers, and it'll start smoothing this out. Um, otherwise, you'll just have a little sanding. Or you can also then play around with encapsulating the entire object within the um, cylinder for the mesh to form. But with that, that's basically the, the crash course, an easy modification. I guess it's easy, um, easy modification of uh, the 3PO parts in Blender. So um, if you guys have any questions, um, hit up the comments and I'll, I'll do my best to answer them. Um, or there's, if there's anything that I, I might have glossed over, um, I can probably point you in directions of other videos that I found extremely helpful. Um, my next steps are um, starting to shift into actually doing my own 3D modeling for some of the parts of Isaac. Um, so um, yeah, this is a journey for me and um, hopefully some of the stuff that I've learned will help you guys out as well. So again, um, you know, thanks for checking out my videos. Hope they help and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.